welcome to the presentation. In these videos, we will go through various practice questions on various topics to help in your preparation for the Canadian CDA exam. Uh, this will be based on the 2018 Diabetes Canada Clinical Practice Guidelines. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more practice questions. Let's begin. In this video, we'll go through questions on the diagnosis of diabetes. In the previous video, we went through diabetes screening. If you haven't seen that video, check it out. The link is in the description below and also at the end of the video. All right, let's begin. All right, question number one. So RJ is a 40-year-old male who recently had lab work done. He is following up with his doctor about his lab results today. His A1C comes back at 6.6%. He is currently not experiencing any symptoms of hyperglycemia. What is the doctor's next step based on RJ's lab results? RJ has type 2 diabetes. He has prediabetes. We need to do a confirmatory test. Follow up in three months. All right, so before we get to the answer, let's go through the diagnosis. Let's just draw a little quick chart here. Give me one second. All right, a little bit messy, but bear with me. All right, so for prediabetes, for diagnosis, what is the fasting plasma glucose levels? So for prediabetes, remember it's 6.1 to 6.9 millimoles per liter. All right, when it's in this range, remember it's called IFG, impaired fasting glucose. All right. So the two hour plasma glucose, 75 gram oral glucose tolerance test. That's between 7.8 to 11 millimoles per liter. And the A1C, as we've covered in previously in the previous video, it was six to 6.4 percent. Now his A1C was 6.6. .6. A1C here, six to 6.4. So we can kind of rule out right now, he doesn't have prediabetes. Let's give that next. Type 2 diabetes. What is the diagnosis for type 2 diabetes uh, based on the fasting plasma glucose? So that is greater than or equal to 7 millimoles per liter. The 2 hour plasma glucose 75 gram oral glucose tolerance test, that is greater than or equal to 11.1 .1 millimoles per liter. And then finally, with the A1C, greater than or equal to 6.5 percent all right so from this what do we see here a1c was 6.6 .6. diagnosis threshold is 6.5 percent greater than or equal to so right away we're going to think oh he has type 2 by diabetes let's circle a actually no that's not right all right now let's go to the, the third choice need a confirmation test you know what that's correct I'm going to show you a quick screenshot of one important table. This is right here, table three, diagnosis of diabetes. This is in uh, chapter three. I'll show you the chapter. Chapter three, definition and diagnosis and classification of diabetes, prediabetes and metabolic syndrome in the Diabetes Canada Clinical Practice Guidelines. That's where this will be located. All right, so we see the diagnosis thresholds for diagnosis of diabetes. In the small print here, make sure you read this. Please read this. It has a lot of little details that are important to know. This explains here when to do a confirmation test. It's a lot to read. Let's just narrow it down to something easy to follow. So let's refer to my little flow chart here. This little flow chart here covers the same information here. All right, let's begin. So confirmation tests required or not. So let's start on this side. So right here, confirmation test required. So when there's no symptoms of hyperglycemia, that is the patient's asymptomatic. A single lab test, when that's done and that's in the diabetes range, for example, it's fasting uh, plasma glucose A1C or, or the OGTT test, if it's in the diabetes range, we don't diagnose right away. We have to do a confirmation test. And preferably, you're going to be doing the same test. If you did the um, A1C, for example, you're going to do the A1C on the confirmation test. If the confirmation test comes back as a uh, diagnosis of diabetes, then we have confirmed our diagnosis. When we look at the random plasma glucose, and that's in the diabetes range, for example, so it's greater than or equal to 11.1 .1 millimoles per liter. If 
the person hits that threshold, we do a confirmation test, but we don't do the random plasma glucose. We do an alternate test. So again, it would be these ones right here. So you can do the fasting plasma glucose A1C or the OGTT test. After that, if you're hitting the diabetes threshold, then you can make your diagnosis of diabetes. So that's when a test is required. Let's move on to when it's not required. So here we have if two different tests that are completed and both are above the diabetes threshold, the diagnosis is confirmed. So if you did the fasting plasma glucose and A1C and they're both within the diabetes threshold, then our diagnosis is confirmed. Next, if there's symptomatic hyperglycemia, so polyuria, polydipsia, polyphagia, weakness, then uh, treatment can be initiated. Remember with polyuria, it just refers to excessive urination, urea. Polydipsia, excessive thirst. Polyphagia, excessive hunger. So just try to remember what those, uh, what those mean. The three polys, you can call them. Next is when type 1 diabetes is likely. So the person is young, lean, they're symptomatic of hyperglycemia. An example would be a person who is admitted to hospital with diabetic ketoacidosis. So their symptoms, their lab results show that there's ketones. You want to initiate treatment rather than delaying, delaying treatment just to complete a confirmation test. All right, let's go back to the question. All right, so from here we can see that we need to do a confirmation test. So our answer is C. We're not going to follow up in three months. His A1C is 6.6%, which falls in the diabetes threshold, but we need to do a confirmation test to confirm the diagnosis. And remember, there's no symptoms of hyperglycemia, and that's why a confirmation test is still important. All right, let's go to the next question. All right, next question. Which of the following readings is in the range for a diagnosis of diabetes? So the first one is two hour plasma glucose in a 75 gram oral glucose tolerance test, nine millimoles per liter, A1C 6.1%, fasting plasma glucose 7.4 per 7.4 millimoles per liter, and a random plasma glucose 10.3 millimoles per liter. So remember with an oral glucose tolerance test, the threshold is greater than or equal to 11.1 millimoles per liter. So it eliminates this one. A1C 6.1%. Remember, it's greater than or equal to 6.5%. So we're going to eliminate this as well. Fasting plasma glucose 7.4. You know, let's have a look again. The cutoff is greater than or equal to 7 millimoles per liter. So yes, this here is our answer. Just to be complete, a random plasma glucose the cutoff is greater than or equal to 11.1 millimoles per liter. Very important to know the diagnostic thresholds, the cutoffs. Uh, this uh, more information can, can be found in chapter three of the Diabetes Canada Clinical Practice Guidelines. And be more specific, it's this one right here, table three, diagnosis of diabetes. The, the cutoffs are right here, and then the little fine details are here as well. All right, let's go to the next question. All right, next question. MJ, a 44-year-old female, had some blood work completed a week ago. As per her doctor's request, today she is following up with her doctor about the results. Her results are fasting plasma glucose, 6.7 millimoles per liter, A1C, 6.3%. What is the doctor's next step based on her results? Make a diagnosis of type 2 diabetes. She has prediabetes. Do a confirmation test. Follow up in three years. Let's go through the thresholds again for type 2 diabetes and for prediabetes. Again, this is repetitive, but repetition will help us remember. So for type 2 diabetes. For the fasting plasma glucose, what is the threshold? Greater than or equal to 7 millimoles per liter. How about the A1C? Remember? Greater than or equal to 6.5%. Let's look at her results. Fasting plasma glucose, 6.7. So it doesn't fall into that, into that range. A1C, 6.3. No, so we can eliminate that as well. So we know it's not type 2 diabetes. Pre-diabetes. What are the thresholds again? Remember it's between 6.1 to 6.9 millimoles per liter. How about the A1C? 
Remember, it's between 6 to 6.4 percent. Look at the numbers here. They actually do fall between these thresholds. So from here, we got our answer. By knowing the threshold, having these numbers at your fingertips, having them memorized, it makes it much more easier to find the right answer. So make sure you know the thresholds. Uh, moving on, need a confirmation test? No, we are, we've already confirmed that it's prediabetes and following up in three years. It's, three years is quite a long time. I'm gonna show you one table, uh, one chart. Remember figure one, the screening algorithm for type two diabetes, it's in chapter four, screening for diabetes in adults. This part right here, when the person's lab results come within the pre-diabetes, we need to screen, rescreen more often. So every three years, it's a little bit lengthy. So when someone has a risk factor, which pre-diabetes is actually a risk factor for type two diabetes. So we actually would want to screen a little bit more often. So every six to 12 months, for example, so keep that in mind. Three years is pretty lengthy. So we've confirmed what our answer is. She has pre-diabetes and needs to be rescreened more often. All right, that's the end of it. All right, that concludes the video. I hope you found this helpful. Give it a like or a thumbs up. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more videos like this. See you in the next one. Thanks for watching.